All right, let's get going. All right, everybody, this is it. It's finally time for the season one finale. <laughs> so, to honor the occasion, I'm going to take the first movie request I can find. Now let's see... Ooh, I know! I saw one on here and... Do Brave Little Toaster. Alright! We're gonna do the Brave Little Toaster. I know that! That's why we're doing its sequel! Uh-uh-uh! Theme song first, then I'll talk. In 1986, Thomas Dish published a children's novel called The Brave Little Toaster, which was originally published for the magazine of fantasy and science fiction in 1980. The novel was received so well that a movie adaptation was made in 1987. The film was dark and had a lot of crazy moments, but it was still enjoyable to a degree. And for anything good or at least profitable, we would have sequels. Two, in fact, one being The Brave Little Toaster Goes to Mars, and the movie we're doing today, The Brave Little Toaster to the Rescue. Now some fun facts about these two. Both movies were produced at the same time, but here's the funny part. While To the Rescue is the second movie chronologically, it was released last. Yeah, even though they planned these movies to have some order, they got Mars out first before the other one. Ironic, though, considering that Thomas did write an actual book version of that movie in 1988, although there's no book version to this movie. In any case, why the hell am I even touching up on such a subject anyway? Because this movie is about animals and involves them in the plot. Thereby, it's like the third One Piece movie, so it's fair game. We open up with a Herman's Hermit song playing, as we see the human characters from the first movie, Rob, played by Chris Young, and his girlfriend Chris, played by Jessica Tuck. They're in their final year of college, and from the looks of things, they must be animal activists. That sounds like one of those corny old songs your radio plays. Hey, them's good tunes. I agree, the oldies had some great music, like this one. Sunshine, lollipops, and rainbows, everything that's wonderful is what I feel when we're together. So the two share in a typical lover's moment in which Rob forgot about their little anniversary. But no time for that, he's got a thesis to finish. For now though, let's just catch up on our main cast, and everyone from the first movie is here. Toaster is now voiced by Deanna Oliver, Radio is voiced by Roger Kabler, and Blanky is voiced by Eric Lloyd. Lampy and Kirby, on the other hand, have Timothy Stack and Thorough Ravenscroft reprising their roles. Antenna, please! Be careful! I haven't dropped you yet, have I? <laughs> Whoops. He might not have the original voice anymore, but he still got that humor of his. And yes, you're seeing this. Lampy's somehow able to get home before his master and without anyone seeing him. He's that good. Master's home! Yeah! Yeah! What is a big deal, for corn's sake? He's only been gone a day and a half. Every weekend, it's the same thing. Is he back yet? Has he abandoned us? Oh, hello, Ratso. Clearly you haven't heard about the time these guys were thought to have been abandoned for years and had to go out on a dangerous journey to find their master. Surely you would understand. What are you talking about? You guys don't know from abandoned. Abandonment is my middle name. Yeah, and it's a room. And nine times out of ten, there are screams. And people are throwing things and calling for the Terminator. I take it you saw this then? <gasps> The world we live in belongs to the enemy. 
we must live carefully. If so, I understand your misfortune. Maisie, the oh-so-adorable furball. A regular kitten factory. Watch your mouth, Ratso. You know I don't like foul language. Yeah, don't speak ill of her. She's got the voice of Grammy Award winner Alfred Woodard. Little Alberto. Looks like a dog. Sounds like a dog. Only he's too small to be a dog. You stop that, you... you dirty rat, you... Hey, a Mexican chihuahua. <laughs> In a python. Absolutely positively correct. Right. So, <laughs> watch all the ruckus. Could it be? Question. That's okay. Uh, thanks, Toaster. <laughs> My God, it's Eddie Bracken. He's gone from cockroach to monkey. I knew I would see him again somewhere along the line. So now they have to clean up the mess they made, which leads into a song sequence. Well, why not? The first movie had song sequences, so I guess this one can too. There are cars sipping by while I, ay ay ay, say vamanos, vamanos to my feet, feet, vamanos! But yeah, nothing against this song, but I'm just gonna breeze through. Pretty much Alberto is here because he got hurt crossing the street, Maisie because she was abandoned, Murgatroyd because he was beaten up by a weasel, and Sebastian... can't remember why, but it has something to do with his arm. The instrumental to this sounds good, but moving on. So before Ratso goes off on his own, he makes Toaster and friends question why they have to be here and not where Lampy is which you'd think would lead somewhere, but not until the end. As for Rob, he continues his thesis just as his lab assistant, Max, shows up. Uh, what, what are they? It's just some tedious paperwork connected to clinic operations. No need to read them, pal. I never sign anything I don't read. Why, he must be our villain if he wants him to sign things without reading it first. More evident by how he's jealous of all of Rob's achievements, including getting the girl. Huh? Rob, your computer! Oh, no! What do you mean my file doesn't exist? You can't do this to me! And this is why you keep a backup. Some expert you turned out to be. Even Mandark can't seem to get it back. If it's any consolation, Rob, you aren't alone. There's some kind of computer virus affecting all the campus system. Anyway, why sweat it? You do have your thesis backed up, don't you? No. Should've hit the save button, buddy. Uh, no, I won't graduate. Oh, how sad. Anyway, we now get a short story on how Sebastian got his arm messed up. I was there when I was just a baby. The things I saw. Were there people there? It was strange. They didn't look like they were mean. But they were. And you know where this is going. They don't believe that humans can be cruel despite appearances until they get a glimpse on the true horrors of man. <gasps> oh, I'm very sorry, Sebastian. Yep, had his arm skinned. What cruel, cruel people. But enough of that. Time for bed. <laughs> ah! Just a little late night humor. <laughs> The following day, a little accident occurs, and when Chris tries to clean it up, she gets into a fight with Rob. Oh, I just don't want you to ruin my vacuum. Oh, I see. It's perfectly fine for me to clean up kitty litter, but not your stupid vacuum. Well, I hope you and your beloved vacuum have a great time celebrating. Celebrating? Celebrating what? Here's a clue. Happy anniversary! It's alright. You still have your appliance fetish. Oh, and apparently Razzle has a short run-in with... The Flying Dutchman? Anyway, Rob decides to start the thesis all over again, leaving Mac in charge. This is where we see him be really nasty. Uh, poor guy. Hey, you want a chip? Come on. It's okay. Stupid monkey. You fall for that one every time. What an ass. So long, animals. <laughs> I'm so bad. I'm so evil! <laughs> Mappy Stealth runs his way back to the lab, where he tells everybody what Rob was doing. Thus, Toaster decides they should help get the thesis back from the computer in the lab. Alright, they can't blame them for that, since they are appliances who don't know any better, and they mean well. 
Though apparently Sebastian knows how to use the computer. Cool color. How do you know how to do that? Monkey see, monkey do. <laughs> Sometimes I look up things you shouldn't see, if you know what I mean. So he explains how the internet, or as they call it, the information superhighway works, when... Oh, honey, don't take this personal, but I think you could use some high-octane assistance. Mm -hmm. What the f***? As a thing goes tap 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 into the superhighway, mm -hmm. computers tap 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 into each other. Never knowing what we'll find. The inputs. Media put. Overland. Oh, see. Go away, you wanna be. And tap 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 into the superhighway. Another world again. Oh. Tap tap tap. <laughs> Rewind. Rewind. Okay, so, the computer said that someone would explain the internet better to them, and then all of a sudden, these things show up? How did they know what they were talking about just now in order to be at their doorstep already? I mean, this is just scary! All of these singing appliances trying to teach the internet? How messed up is that? I don't understand. How does this all work exactly? Oh god! <sighs> and it's not a bad song either. It just comes the hell out of nowhere and once it's done, we never see these guys again. So yeah, blam it, forget about it, moving on. Ratso finds the Flying Dutchman again, or rather a computer, and as it turns out, it's the cause for the virus outbreaks. And right now it brings up the shipping order that Mac worked on. <laughs> I saw something. It was an order. A shipping order. You're always shipping things in and out of this school. Where are we being sent? To Tartarus Laboratory. Tartarus. Those fiends! We have to do something at- Oh, time to resolve the breakup subplot. I've forgiven you, by the way. Everything was going so well, too. I had my career ahead of me, doing what I've always dreamed of. I had you. It was gonna come together on the anniversary. How many pages was your thesis? 612. How many more are left to reconstruct? Not counting the title page? 611. Nothing could possibly be any worse than what I'm going through. Back on track, the animals get worried on what might happen to them, and before Ratso can talk about the thing in the basement, Robin and Mac show up. They look a little... I don't know. Different. Down in the mouth. Hey, come on, they're just animals! I don't really think they have feelings, do you? Amy would have to disagree. Amy, good gorilla. Tickle me. Jungle. Tickle oh. me. Tickle me. Call me if there's any change in any of their conditions. Hope you got a good last look at that do-good a friend of yours. Cause at midnight tonight, you are all history. <laughs> so the party's all here. Off they go on their epic adventure. You gonna leave me? Look, Kirby, it isn't that we're leaving you, it's... Well, these guys need protecting. Besides, the usual party limit is five. Don't take it personally. Don't worry, fans of Kirby. He gets his moment to shine. Meanwhile, back with Toaster and crew... Ta-da! Sorry! Oh boy, what an ugly machine he is. Just who is he, and how is he doing all of this? Oh, it's more than a cold. It's a... a... a virus. Wait, Brian Doyle Murray voices him? Finally! I've been waiting forever to have you show up in one of my reviews. Go on, say something funny with that raspy voice of yours. Well, not to you. 
It only happens if you're online. Yay. You're so state of the art. What are you doing down here in cold storage? Nobody wants old Wittgenstein. How long have you been down here? Four trillion nine hundred ninety nine billion four hundred fifty million eight hundred fifty two thousand three hundred twelve nanoseconds. Let's see. Convert this. Round it down. Do do. That's only an hour and 23 minutes. Are you sure that's how long you've been stuck down here? Well, of course, he sings a song about it, and then we get to see this so-called virus he has. Jump and march, do and burn. There's a lot here to destroy. Inch by inch, it's a thing. Bringing down this big old boy. Right. Apparently, viruses in this world can break the external components of a computer even though they're only known for damaging software and infecting programs and rarely actually cause a malfunction. This must be one hell of a virus if it's able to do all of this. But even then, how has he been able to do all of this if he was shut down? How can he still be hooked up to the internet anyway? There's something wrong with this whole picture. Also, the viruses look like rejected Galaga aliens. Why don't you tell me what's happening to the animals? That creature who goes by the name of Mac is shipping them out tonight. I've been trying to alert the creature known as Rob. Through my efforts to contact your master, his thesis got lost. So basically, Wittgenstein is like a computer god who has control with everything hooked up to the internet. And by attempting to warn Rob, he pretty much screwed him over. Way to go! So he tells them how his last active tube is about to run dry, and it would seem radio uses the exact same tube. Unfortunately, there aren't any more available. Although, Ratzel seems confident that he can find one, so radio tags along. Cue appropriate music! Hi With luck, they find it, and it looks like everything will be all right. No, no, I am. No, no. Oops. Look what you did. <laughs> so with the shipment order now printed, Wittgenstein tries one last time to do something. But alas, it's not enough as the inevitable happens. <laughs> And it's all your fault! Way to ruin everything, Radio. You just had to let your humor get the better of you. You just had to be a show-off. You just had to... Oh... Shoot. So they put Radio's tube in and... Wait. Weren't those tubes undamaged earlier? Bull crap! It's one thing that they can revive themselves when they're fully repaired, but how the hell do you completely repair yourself by just replacing one stinking part? Not only that, he was able to destroy the virus infecting him. Like, now you're just pushing it. In-universe or not, that's really pulling it out of your ass. So he forms a plan for everyone to follow, and they head back to the lab, only to find it empty. So it's time to gear up and save the day. I have orders to come with you guys. What exactly are you? I'm a modem. Can't travel anywhere on the superhighway without me. Modems do not work that way. So Rob is warned on the situation and goes to pick up Chris. By this point, Wittgenstein is breaking all sorts of logic, so let's just make it as epic as possible. Stomach! Ah! 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 Ah
Yeah! I got a snake in my pants! Mac! So you're behind this. I can't believe that even as big a loser as you could stoop to something like this. Now punch him in the face before the cops see. So despite a sudden stop, which broke everyone's cages, it looks like everyone is unharmed. Oh crap. Hang on, Maisie. Maisie? <sighs> yeah, like that's going to happen. Not when there are kittens around. Of course it's this sort of moment that gets Rattle the chance to be the first thing her children see. So Rob, along with Chris and Charlie, find Wittgenstein and he'll be going to a museum. Looks like everything's all good in the world. Oh. It's my radio. He's missing a tube. It's a cathode tube. The, the WFC 11, 12, 55. They're, they're impossible to find. Oh right, radio's still dead. Well, his sacrifice will not be forgotten. Oh, who am I kidding? Also, he got his thesis back. Yay! Rob proposes to Chris, she says yes, and thus they head off for their new life along with the appliances and Ratso. As for everyone else, Maisie and family are now mascots, Alberto gets a new family to watch him, luckily not film renegados. <laughs> Murgatroyd is now chilling at the reptile house, and Sebastian is kicking Kerchik's ass in chess at the primate house. Yep. Everything ended on a sweet and happy note. And I have to say, this wasn't bad. Yes, it's strange, and I was expecting to not really like this movie, but instead it was... kinda enjoyable. The plot is basic, as well as more lighthearted than the first movie. The new characters weren't bad, and the old characters were the same as ever. The animation is decent, and the songs were passable. I had a good time with this one. Some laughs along the way. All I can say is that if you liked the first movie, you might enjoy this one as well, for it's rather fun for a brave little toaster movie. And with that, we can now officially end Season 1 of The Media Hunter Show. Thank you for sticking with me for this long, and I hope next season will... Hello. You! <laughs> I'm ready for you this time. Well, um, shoot. You didn't really think you could end without a proper finale, did you? What's going on? My thesis! It's back! It's gone! What's this? 